Hi there. Um, so uh, in the previous videos, uh, we have talked about the Cauchy Riemann conditions and uh, we've also explicitly uh, used the Cauchy Riemann equation to check uh, for, for a few functions, uh, in particular the identity mapping w is equal to z, uh, then the conjugate w is equal to z bar and uh, uh, mappings of the form w z equals z to the power of, of n uh, with the specific case uh, w z equals z square. Um, and, and we've used the Cauchy Riemann equations to check whether these functions are analytic or not. So uh, in this video, let's take up another example, which is quite useful in the study of complex functions, which is uh, the mapping w z equals one over z, and it's called the inversion mapping. Um, so uh, we'll talk uh, like uh, we'll talk about this mapping from somewhat different points of view uh, in, in, in in the coming videos. But for now, let's focus on uh, its analytical properties and let's just see how to use the Cauchy Riemann equations to check uh, for its analyticity. Um, so again, uh, the Cauchy Riemann equations are these constraint equations. Um, so given a function, a complex function of the form w z equals some function, uh, we can write in why we, we typically use uh, u and the symbol u and v for the real and imaginary parts of the complex function. Um, where u and v are functions of x comma y, where uh, z is, uh, so z is x plus i y, and w is u plus i v, and u and v are functions of x and y. And so the Cauchy Riemann equations require us to check whether uh, du dx, the partial derivative of u with respect to x, is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to y, and simultaneously both of these should be satisfied. So the partial derivative of v with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of u, is equal to minus of the partial derivative of u with respect to y. Uh, so, so one of the first things we need to do is find out what u and v are as functions of x and y. So in this case, uh, we're given one over z um, as the mapping, and one of the ways to uh, extract what u and v are uh, is to divide and multiply uh, this function by the conjugate z bar. Now, given that z is x plus i y, then z bar is x minus i y. And we also know from one of the previous videos that z times z bar, uh, z times z bar is actually modulus of z square, which is x square plus y square. And so this gives us u as x plus uh, x divided by x squared plus y squared and v as minus y divided by x squared plus y squared. So let's write this down here. So u as a function of x comma y is x divided by x squared plus y squared and v as a function of x comma y is um, minus y divided by x squared plus y squared. And now we need to check for these um, Partial we need to calculate these partial derivatives and check whether these conditions are satisfied. So let's do that. Um, <clears throat> so the partial derivative of u with respect to x uh, is the derivative of this function with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to x, and this will be x squared plus y squared whole square. Um, then we have the derivative of this with respect to x is 1, then and a factor of x squared plus y squared, minus x times the derivative of this with respect to x, which is 2x squared. And this gives us y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared whole square. Uh, okay, and then we need to check the partial derivative of v with respect to y. So dv dy will be um, x again x the denominator will be x squared plus y squared whole square. Uh, we have a minus factor outside coming from this minus. Um, then we have one which is x squared plus y squared minus y times 2y and this is um, 2y squared minus y squared minus x squared which is again y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared whole square and these two are indeed equal uh, so the first Cauchy Riemann condition is indeed satisfied um, let's write this factor down for reference uh, so du dx is y squared minus x square divided by x square plus y square whole square. Uh, I must mention one thing here, although these factors are equal, there's one special point where we cannot claim that they are equal. And that point is the point uh, where x is zero and y is zero. Because if x is zero and y is zero, both of them are simultaneously zero, which is the point origin, uh, which is the origin of the uh, complex plane z equals zero. 
then notice that this function is of the form 0 divided by 0 and this dv dy is also of the form 0 divided by 0. Um, and, and, and in that case, uh, it's not legitimate for us to say that these two are actually equal because 0 divided by 0 is not well defined. So these two are equal. Uh, so let's write them down. So these are, um, so the first Cauchy Riemann condition is satisfied except uh, at z equals 0. Okay. Uh, now let's also check the other Cauchy Riemann condition, the second Cauchy Riemann condition, and evaluate what the partial derivative of v uh, with respect to x is. So again, dv dx will be uh, x squared plus y squared whole square. There's a minus factor outside. Now the partial derivative of y with respect to x is 0. Then we have minus. The partial derivative of this factor with respect to x is 2x, uh, 2x, um, 2x. And then we have a factor y coming from here. So this is 2xy divided by x squared plus y squared whole square. And then let's check du dy du dy is again x square plus y square whole square. Uh, the partial derivative of this respect to y is 0. And then we have minus uh, x times 2y. So this is minus 2xy divided by x square plus y square whole square. So again, dv dx is equal to minus du dy. So they are indeed correct, except at z equals 0 where x and y are both 0 and therefore this assumes the form 0 divided by 0 this is also 0 divided by 0 when at the origin and then it's not well defined okay so uh, except for the point z equal to 0 everywhere else in the complex plane uh, the Cauchy Riemann conditions both the Cauchy Riemann conditions are satisfied and therefore we can claim that uh, the function wz equals 1 over z is analytic everywhere except um, at z equals 0. And we'll talk a little bit more about the special point z equals 0 with respect to this inversion mapping and it has some very beautiful consequences. Um, but for now, in terms of analyticity, let's just claim that z equals 0 is some kind of a special point which we'll talk about later. But um, except for this particular point, uh, the function is analytic everywhere else in the complex plane. And then the question is, what is uh, the derivative itself, w prime z, which is uh, dw dz. This should be, we can evaluate this from the expression du dx plus i times dv dx. So let's check what this is. Um, so w prime z will be, uh, du dx is this, and actually dv dx we evaluate it to be 2xy um, divided by x squared plus y squared whole square. So w prime z will be um, du dx is x uh, divided by, uh, sorry, uh, y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared whole square. Um, and then we have plus i times 2xy Again, the factor x squared plus y squared whole square is common here and here. So we can combine them. And so the overall function is y squared minus x squared plus uh, i times 2xy. That should be w prime z. Um, but it will be useful to express this expression uh, in terms of what in terms of z itself um, to, and, and therefore to get rid of x and y and combine them in some way so that we can write it in terms of z and see uh, what the derivative is. Um, so in order to do that, notice that the numerator can be expressed in the form y plus ix whole square because the square of this will be y square minus x square plus 2iXy whereas the denominator is x square plus y square whole square which we can write as modulus of z to the power of 4 or it's z z bar uh, which is modulus of z square, the square of this, this factor. So it's z z bar square. Okay, now if z is x plus i y, uh, then notice that i times z is i times x minus y. So that is not the numerator that we're looking for. 
Uh, however, z bar is uh, x minus i y and if we evaluate i times z bar then this is i times x minus i square times y which is indeed i x plus y and that is exactly the numerator that we are looking for. And so uh, this expression can be written as i times z bar square divided by z square z bar square i square is minus 1 so this is minus z bar square divided by z square z bar square this cancels out and we find that the derivative is actually minus 1 over z square and that's stub prime z and notice this is exactly again the same result that we would expect from a real fun function of one real variable of the form 1 over x whose derivative f prime x will be minus 1 over x squared and in this case we have the function w z equals 1 over z and again the derivative is minus 1 over z squared um, so in fact this carries over to other polynomial uh, other monomials um, of the form 1 over z to the power of n and we can simply generalize uh, the, uh, the the formula that we know for functions of one real variable to uh, to find out uh, the, uh, the, the 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 analogous derivative for a complex function of the form one over z to the power of n, where n could be any positive integer. Um, so uh, so yeah, so hope this is uh, of some use, and uh, let's sort of talk uh, more about some of these functions that we've already started talking about, and and in particular look at the geometry as well in some of the coming videos. Um, so see you there, thanks.